Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about the importance of just getting all around strong instead of just strong at the big three. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand that I promote uh, because I, I do promote uh, powerlifting to some extent here. There can be a misconception that all I care about, like a lot of powerlifters, is the squat bench and deadlift, and, and nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, I even believe oftentimes in going pretty long periods of time while skipping one or two of even the big three, right? It's not necessary even for a power lifter to do those lifts all the time. Now, there can be benefits to doing them all the time. And what people need to understand that they are very, very good lifts, very good lifts. And you can absolutely build a very large chunk of your strength base around those three lifts. But you do need to be strong at multiple movement patterns. And what I would say in general is that you have at least five or six basic movement patterns that it would be a very, very good idea to get strong at if you want to be proportioned in terms of your strength, your muscularity, your musculature, everything else. Uh, you generally need to do that. You have at least five to six movement patterns that you need to build a base on. And that can be misconstrued because I have strength standards for the big three. And actually I have strength standards for a big five, don't I? because uh, that includes the squat bench deadlift along with the press, which is a standing barbell press, and weighted pull-up or weighted chin-up. Um, and, and I have a lot of reasons for that. I've done multiple videos on why I have those specific standards. But at the end of the day, you don't necessarily have to do the big three. But you need to remember that strength is specific and that the big three are good proxies for strength, at least through those three movement patterns, through a squat, through a, I guess, a horizontal press and a hip hinge, right? Because deadlift is a hip hinge. But here's what I would say to people. If you want to get all around strong, you still need something to replace those. So let's say that you're not going to do a back squat, you're not going to do a deadlift, and you're not going to do a flat barbell bench. If you want to be maximally strong and big and you want really good development, let's even talk about just efficiency of your training, right? If you want your training to be reasonably efficient, you're going to need replacements for those exercises. And that's what people need to understand. And, and I think I've done a pretty good job of showing people that there are good replacements for those exercises because I, I replace them from time to time. Like even right now, I'm not benching. I'm doing weighted dips. But that's an example of what we're talking about with having a big exercise to replace them. And no, I do not believe that dumbbells can replace the big three. Right, it, because it comes down to not being able to use a big enough weight, even through the ranges of motion that we're wanting to do. And I'm not saying dumbbell work doesn't have its place for accessory movements and stuff. It, they can be value, valuable for accessory movements. Absolutely, it can be extremely valuable for accessories. But they are not replacements. They will not put the total size and strength on you that a big barbell movement will. They, they won't. Um, and you people can debate that all they want. Bodybuilders can debate that, but they have the luxury of tons of drugs to help. For everybody who doesn't have tons of drugs to put on muscle mass, you're not going to get all the full benefits from the dumbbells. Um, but here's what I'm saying. You need to have replacements for those, and you need to be good at multiple exercises. So what I would say is that if you're not going to flat bench, like let's say you're not going to do the barbell flat bench, well, you better be doing either a shallow incline bench with a barbell or a weighted dip, right? You're going to need something for that movement pattern. And me personally, when I don't bench at all, I like the floor press and I like the weighted dip. You know what? I think they're legitimate replacements for the flat barbell bench press personally. I think that both of those can put just as much size and strength, if not more, on you than uh, the flat bench. In fact, I think the weighted dip, if you can safely do it and you don't mind the extra loading, uh, around it uh, and tracking it by keeping up with your body weight and stuff. I think the weighted dip has actually slightly more hypertrophy uh, potential, right? Hypertrophic, I guess that's the term we would use. Hypertrophic potential. Uh, I think in certain ways it's superior. I like dips, especially for size. It's general size. Uh, if you're not going to do a back squat, you damn well better be doing a front squat. There is no machine that can replace that. It can't. And because people need to understand, it's not just legs. Getting maximal development out of an exercise is very rare that you have an exercise that only works one thing. Uh, leg press can easily equal the squat for just leg development. Sure it can, but why would you want only leg development? 
the squat's a full body exercise. A squat trains you to have a, a tremendously strong core. It trains you to have a strong back. All of those things that can be equal to your leg strength, right? And no machine is going to replicate that and no one-legged exercise is going to replicate that. If you try to do it that way, you're going to have a strength imbalance. And it's mainly it's going to be in your core and things like that, right? Two-legged exercises where you're standing are your best lower body developers because they build your core and your back with them. And you lose that when you go to one leg. You lose that when you go to a machine. And, and even some of these hack squat machines, they don't replicate it. So if you're not going to do a back squat, hey, that's fine. But you better be doing a front squat. Better be doing a front squat. Now, arguably, people, if they got strong enough on something like a goblet squat, if you can find a heavy enough dumbbell, maybe. But uh, best of luck finding dumbbells heavy enough unless you want to do ultra high reps and you still don't get the specific strength you want out of that. I think that falls back under being a good supplemental lift, you know. Definitely a good supplemental lift. Uh, you could do a safety bar squat, right? You don't have to do a regular barbell back squat to get the strength and size that you would get from it. But, you know, barbell squat is hard to beat. Those are the only things that are going to compete with it, though. A front squat, safety bar squat, that's it. Nothing else competes with that for what it does. Those could be suitable replacements in the right environment. Uh, we get to a deadlift. It's for just brutal strength. It's hard to beat the deadlift. Now, you don't have to deadlift. You know, you could do a different hip hinge. You could do a different hip hinge. Uh, you could do good mornings. If you don't want the extra grip strength, but you're losing development, aren't you? That can't compete with the deadlift because there's no real grip involved. But as far as the other movement pattern, uh, the movement pattern itself being a hip hinge, you know, you can do that. You do a Romanian deadlift. You don't want to do a deadlift. It'll give you a lot of the development. Uh, you could do power cleans, right? I think a power clean. If someone absolutely did not want to deadlift uh, and they still wanted to get a really solid hip hinge that, that gave them good size, strength, uh, athleticism, everything else, I think a power clean could replace it. So there's replacements for these big three, but here's what I would say. That's still not really enough, is it? You need to be strong in other things. And it's to tell, tell people at the minimum, you need some sort of pull up or chin up and you need to do an overhead press, you know? So that's, that's what I would say is your bare minimum for a big five. So if you didn't want to do the, the big three, you could replace them with those other things, but you still need a standing press. Now I prefer the press. Right, which is what you guys see me do. But you could do a push press. You know, you can do a push press. I don't think you can replace it with anything but a barbell though. Because I think even these handstand push ups that people do, I don't think it gives you the full potential that you get with the barbell because of the, the limitations on bar path and things and dealing with your head. Um, unless you've got bars and stuff to hold on to, you're not gonna be able to replicate that bar path. And you're trying to balance your body in an awkward way. It's way more difficult than a dip or something. Um, maybe, maybe a handstand push up on bars. It would have to be on bars though, so that you can get your head and do the full range of motion. Uh, dumbbells, it's hard for them to replace it. Because again, we come back to the core situation. You could do them one arm at a time, but then you're not going to get enough loading. Uh, so it's just all around a barbell is really your most suitable thing for that movement pattern. And you need that movement pattern in my opinion. And you need a pull up or a chin up. No machine or lat pull down can replace that. Because again, you look at all the stabilizers involved, the core development, everything else. Um, I think a, a weighted pull up is arguably one of the single most important exercises anybody could do. All right? Particularly for, for upper body development. Particularly for upper body development. I think power lifters all need to be doing pull ups. I mean, so let's come over and talk about a, an exercise that carries over to your big three and can help balance you out as an accessory movement. I think the weighted pull-up is something every power lifter should be doing, even though their focus is on the big three. So if I think every power lifter should be doing a weighted pull-up, then everyone who's trying to get big and strong in general, even if they're not focused on those, should be doing it. Uh, so, I mean, you need to be all around strong. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with picking exercises that aren't the norm, but you need to make sure that they do have the carryover to your general strength that you want. Because there's a lot of exercises you see that are show off exercises that I don't think bring as much to the table, right? They don't bring as much to the table. 
certain deadlift variations and things that people try to do, I honestly don't think they're equal to even a conventional deadlift and what they bring in terms of uh, potential muscle balance, uh, everything else. I just don't think they do. But I agree, it's important to be all around strong. You don't need to be strong at just the big three. Uh, and the big three in their own way are optional. I think they're fantastic exercises. But there are suitable replacements for them for a person who is not going to compete specifically in powerlifting, right? But by that same token, being as big and strong as possible, I don't think you should disregard them either if your goal is to really maximize on everything because they are really, really good exercises. They are good exercises. And I think there's that tendency out there for a lot of people to look at those and say, well, because that's the domain of power lifters that, that I'm going to avoid doing them just to be trendy. And I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think that's the stupidest reason in the world to avoid them. If you have something that you think works just as well and you happen to like more, that's a good reason. But I can tell you right now, a Jefferson deadlift, for example, is not going to replace what a deadlift brings to the table. It's not. But a weighted dip, can a weighted dip replace the bench press, for example, for a lot of people? I would say, yeah, absolutely. It's just as good of an exercise, arguably better. So that sort of, of change out does make sense for a person who's never going to compete in powerlifting. Uh, I don't think that's an unreasonable choice. And so we don't have to be focused on the, on the big three for general strength, general size. But we also shouldn't arbitrarily disregard them when they're proven exercises that we have an enormous amount of coaching material on, that, that all the homework has been done on already, um, that even if another exercise is equal to it, there's still advantages to doing the conventional exercises simply because of the amount of coaching material and programming material and expertise that already exist as a knowledge base for them. That gives them their own advantage uh, by itself. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.